This is the story of the struggles and dreams of four men as they strive for Olympic gold. An intimate record from video diaries of their personal lives, loves, ambitions and fears on the long road to Sydney. Gatta is the social and rowing event of the season. It's fun for the spectators, but for Steve Redgrave's Coxmas 4, it's very tense. Raise your own rights. Be mentally tough and strong. Their East German coach, Jürgen Grobler, prepares them for their first race together for 10 months. Stay together already as a team, now coming back to our real potential. They lost their last race. Tim Foster had been out of the boat after putting his hand through a window at a party. I felt quite a lot of anger towards him. It's just it's been frustrating losing and frustrating that I haven't done anything wrong and I'm in a worse situation because of someone else. You know, it's weird not talking to him for such a long time. I did very much feel out of it, sort of really sent to Coventry. Yeah, it's nice to be back in the fold. It's not as if I feel I've got to go out there and make amends or show them how good I am, I, I mean, I, I just see it as, uh, as the fall's first race. Mm. Just means we don't know how fast we are, so I think we'll uh, find out a lot about ourselves. It's been a tough year for all of them. Steve Redgrave has struggled with diabetes. His team must bond again if he's to get his fifth Olympic gold. I want to be in Sydney racing for a gold medal. It's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis now that determines what our results are going to be. Winning at Henley would put the four back on course, but it's not going to be easy. Even Matthew Pinsent, normally Mr. Cool, is nervous. Needless to say, it's a very important race. And, um, I, mean, I, know, I mean, everyone's going to be nervous for it. I've been very nervous all morning. That's an impossible feeling to shake off. It's a good feeling to have, but it's very strange being so nervous at home, being at our home club. It's very different. The first race is against the Australian Awesome Foursome, the reigning Olympic champions. It's stiff competition, and after their recent defeat, the four no longer seem invincible. Same as always, expect the unexpected. It's a massive test for us, and we're pretty nervous. I'm pretty nervous already, looking forward to it. But yeah. in the deep end, put it that way. But that's what we wanted. This time is about Matthew's hand. It's a wonderful race. I'm busy, Mr. Pinson, is so juvenile. Oh, I can swear to me with your hand a bollock from the steward. And the steward, really? I've got my hat to and I had to keep it above my head. So we it now. So it now. Right. Steve's wife, Anne, used to be a professional rower 
and is now the team doctor. She comes to as many races as she can with baby Zach and daughters Natalie and Sophie. Lynn likes to say hello. How you doing? All right. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I said I couldn't keep doing that for six minutes. How you doing? Not too bad. Fortunately, just that little bit longer for them. When they started closing, I thought, ooh. I don't know if they... That's the first race I've done since. Yeah. Quite a nice one to get. To get back into it. To get back into it. Yeah, just over the last couple of days, it's been getting really tough. And I'm thinking, hmm, yeah, what am I doing to it? Do you feel all right? Hand wise, I said it. I need something to do with my legs, though. My legs are hurting a little bit. I think they're supposed to. For the hand, I couldn't do what Matthew did and take one hand off. I, I wouldn't trust that like, I was working on one and a half hands as it was. So let's put it with a scroll. The thumb isn't quite bent enough to ride properly. It's been, uh, you know, a lot more comfortable with uh, with Tim in the boat than it, than it was when he wasn't. Um, I mean, uh, we've always been at pains to point out that that's not a reflection on the guy that we put in in his place. It's just the fact that this is the unit that, that started in the outset, and so this becomes the benchmark. This this becomes the, the comfortable way. This is the way to do it, and then anything else is an alternative. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, it's not so bad. It's good to be another one. Oh. The final tomorrow is against the Danes, but they all breathe a sigh of relief, having proved to themselves that they are back on winning form. Yeah, I waited for it, and then the push was good. Mm -hmm. You found you could row one-handed? <laughs> well, I couldn't row one-handed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the case, maybe. <laughs> That's where it's our advantage in the middle. Tomorrow, with both hands. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop it in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and if the boat goes fast, the bomb knows something. <laughs> the thing is, to, uh, is that we can get carried away, that it was a good, a good row and a good piece. Mm. Um, but we might have not. Well, I think we haven't raced the fastest for yet. The next day, they row against the Danes and win again. Congratulations flood in from everyone, including Prince Philip, who knows a thing or two about rowing. We have our shores. The four are champions once more. Tim's okay. I like getting on with with him just like before really. I mean I don't really I mean there's a lot to heal heal any tension that was there when you win. Um he also showed how valuable he was to the four and how well he makes the rest of us row. I just hope the same would happen if I wasn't there. Well no, I don't know they'd lose, but I'd hope that I was missed as much. So that's going well, sharing a room with, with Tim again for the three weeks here. Should be okay. Nice and close. <laughs> nice double bed for three weeks of them. Over the next two months, the four go abroad for a series of races and training camps. As they move from country to country, living and working together 24 hours a day, they have lots of time for bonding, both on and off the water. I've never seen them so aggressive, Martin. Last night around the hotel, they were just quiet. They kept themselves to themselves. And you can see they were really, really pumped. Britain are back. I'm the blue one. You're the blue one. You're the red one. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> They win all their races and end the season rock solid, especially Tim and James. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, 
Oh, it's just, oh I just pressed it gently just to smell it. Look, I'll see it came out. <laughs> Hi. Oh, shave your chest and put a, a little patch up in your left temple. <laughs> it's, ooh, it's powerful stuff, look. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is your best performance ever. <laughs> Are you pleased with that? <laughs> See where I'm. Do you want to come over my leg? <laughs> While the four have been away, their home club in Henley, the Leander, has been undergoing a transformation. They're back now to train here for the winter season, in the midst of all the builders' rubble. I've done the floor layout for the gym and ordered up the, ordered up the equipment. That was my job, um, but it wasn't my money I was spending. The refurbishment is costing three million pounds, two million of which is lottery funding. The difference with this and other sporting projects is that other sporting projects have to be, you know, made available to the, you know, to the general population. And what was what was different with this lottery application is that it wasn't wasn't going to be like that. It's an elite centre, and that's and that's been a that's been a departure for for the lottery. All meetings now take place in a porter cabin. Tim has called the crew together to discuss a health problem. He had a serious back operation in 1995, and a recent scan has shown he needs an injection in the base of his spine. Uh, what they've spotted at the moment is a tear and a sort of small bulge, but nothing sort of major. So as long as I don't stress the disc, so it will sort of spread out the side. I'll sort of be okay, so it sort of proves there is a problem there that we, we do need to address. I mean, maybe if it means not rain till Christmas. I think we have now a little bit of praxis in crisis management, especially from the last year. And of course, with his illness now, we have to assess the situation without losing our goal to have him back in, in the boat as soon as possible, no question. It doesn't affect me. Uh, at all, really. I haven't got, I haven't got any problems with it. I'm happy doing, doing what we're doing and training along and, and giving Tim the time he needs to get back, get back uh, into the boat again. It was actually nice to see the other guys. It's funny how different they are to me, particularly James, compared to my hand injury, which was self-inflicted. I mean, the hand injury was stupid and but recoverable. I mean, you, well, I knew it was just a case of getting my hand back into shape, and that wasn't going to affect my rowing with the back, which is caused by my rowing. I mean, that could be something that re recurs. It's not a question of six weeks out. It, it could be six weeks out, come back, and then out permanently, depending on whether I can my back can take it, so people say sport's good for you, <laughs> but it isn't at the top level. There was definite degeneration of the disc. It's just a sign that my body is uh, complaining about what I put it through, really. You want him to have a, a nice life after rowing, and uh, you don't want to rock at your back now. I mean, people say, you know, would you rather be... Um, George Foreman or Muhammad Ali, and they think, well, that's the hard question, isn't it? Would you rather be known as the greatest ever, but have Parkinson's, well, if Parkinson's is caused by his boxing now, or be Foreman, you know, he's got all his senses, he's, you know, happy break at 50, no problems, but we'll always be known for losing. Tim has the injection in his spine and is recuperating at his parents' house. Had my little operation today. Feeling a little bit battered and bruised, uh, but not really worse for wear. Hopefully it's first stage of uh, getting better, so you have to go through this sometimes. Um, I'm at my mum and dad's house. My mum's looking after me, um, which is nice. Mum's cooking. Hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> While Tim is flat on his back and unable to train, the others have gone to Australia, 
they intensify their training, becoming super fit. Whilst in Sydney, they go to inspect the Olympic course. In the future, we're going to be coming into race. They led by 10 seconds after 500. They were three seconds adrift at the halfway mark. <laughs> Three of us here, but, uh, as long as it's not three of us. Uh, yeah, let's not. <laughs> when we come back in 2000, perhaps there's a new event. <laughs> you better get training, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I can hold you. It's always good to see it before we race. You know, you can picture in your mind what you're building towards. It's, it's a shame Tim hasn't been here to see it. Uh, he should be back training. By January 1st, <laughs> supposedly. Well, maybe not January 1st. And I was feeling a bit rough, but you know, around them. But things aren't going well for Tim. His back has taken a turn for the worse, and he has to have a disc removed. It's a major operation. Basically, discovered that if I actually stay in bed, um, it's the only way really to stave off the screaming abdabs, really. Um, which isn't great, in the week when I was hoping to get back into training, get fitter. In terms of what Jürgen will do, in terms of someone going in the fall, will they train? I don't know, it's still early days yet, we don't normally row the fall too much at this point, but with only three people, they can either not row it at all or get somewhere else in, whether that person comes in temporarily or permanently, I don't know. That'll have to be sorted out. Jürgen to, to deal with really, he'll talk to the others about it and uh, hopefully I'll still be a part of it but everything's up in the air at the moment. One of the perks of a top sportsman's life is attending balls and society events. Tonight it's the annual Sparks Charity Ball where celebrities, sports people and royals rub shoulders. Steve is there with his wife Anne. <laughs> James and Matthew's escorts are their girlfriends Emily and Dee. These dresses, man. Really nice. That's a cracker, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, her dress is all right. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Tim has a prior engagement. Sparks button. Um. um I'll make a cup of coffee or whatever. Okay. It's not all bad, I got a free dinner. Free cup of coffee. Don't have to go to the Hilton to have that, you know. It's about nine o'clock, dinner must be in full swing, but I... <laughs> People have been very nice. The card from James and Anne and Stephen Matthew. Every once in a while I feel that, I don't know, not my place is under threat, but I'm threatening the four in some way I'm not going to be as good as I could be, maybe. The option to give up rowing now isn't something I've, I've contemplated. I mean, I want to carry on, I want to I wanna win that gold medal in Sydney more now than, than I ever have. And, Basically, it means that, I don't know, if, when I'm standing up there at the top of the roster, I'll know what I've had to go through to get there, and I, I won't care what other people see or do, or what they think. I'll know what I've had to go through to do it, and it'll, it'll make it worthwhile. <laughs> I hope they're having a nice time. You have the Hilton at the ball at the moment. bad day, you, you just wonder if it's worth it. You think it's gone wrong because you're in twice as much pain as you ever were beforehand, before the operation and you kind of, logically if you think about it, you know there's going to be an end to it. But uh, kind of when today is worse than yesterday and it's worse than the day before, if you get a couple on the trot it's 
Um, yeah, it's difficult to think logically. Tim's recovery is slower than expected. Jürgen has taken Ed Code out of the eighth boat and put him in the four as Tim's substitute. What's not anyway decided? Do we know, um... Now 23, he rode for Eton and Oxford, but has only recently taken it up full time. <laughs> Tim, see you. Nice to see you. How are you? Okay, yeah. Looking good? Yeah. Feeling quite good. Okay. Tim comes to the Leander for a meeting to find out when he can come back into the four. Ed Code is here too. How we integrate Tim. You know, and I see it not always straight away for or as a four as a as a as a first thing. So okay, maybe coming back in the team. I must admit I'm not looking to get back into the team, I'm looking to get back into into this crew. I mean, if I was recovering from an injury my my first aim wouldn't be to get back into the team. It'd be to get back in where I left off. That just if it was me, that's just Yeah, but you've got to think of how much time he's been off. Done basically any training before um, Australia. The limiting factor I look at is my back. I think by the time I'm fit enough to row backwise, I suspect the fitness won't be so much of a problem. Uh, it's going to take time. Um, and obviously, we hope that he gets back, but uh, see what happens as it develops. It's important that we. Keep moving on and not wait, not waiting around. So we just crack on as if, you know, as hard as it sounds, we crack on as if nothing's nothing's happened. I mean, it shouldn't make any difference to us. We will not slow down now and waiting. And so far, we have to deal with Ed as well. If we take it personal and not, the, <laughs> you know, uh, and face our problem. Okay, it's, it's a hard business. It's a very hard business, high performance sport, no question, you know, you know that and my other sport. Of course we want, we want Tim back. Um, we proved last year of uh, how much we missed him when um, he put his uh, hands to the window and uh, the, the fours didn't respond very well until he was back in it and it certainly gave it a lot more life um, and convinced to all of us that uh, it's the four of us in that unit, in those positions, that uh, make it as good as it, as it is. Very, very difficult. And it's got somebody else sitting in his seat. That's harder for him, him to cope with. Yeah, I do, I do feel sorry for him. Just be a member of the team, which was what Jürgen was saying at the meeting. I mean, it was, it was quite demoralising, really. I've reached a point where I'm now starting to get worried about the getting back in. It's not that I'm not confident I won't be good enough to get in, but I think the worrying thing is how that's done, and I think I did pretty well in all the trials last year. I don't think that much will have changed by the time I'm back rowing. Uh, but Jürgen, depends how he sees it. Matthew, James and Ed go to a training camp in Seville while Tim stays in England. This is Ed's big chance to prove himself and advance his career. I'm the new member of the Coxes for for the time being. Jürgen's been supportive and telling me I sh should be going for it. And he's not seeing me as just some uh, seat warmer. Tim, I'd like to say, is quite a good friend of mine. Um, it's not nice to see him injured in this way at all. Um, it's given me quite a chance here though. It will be annoying when I get replaced, if I get replaced. You know, to do all the hard training with them now and then not wasting them in the summer would be uh, pretty painful. Obviously I prefer to stay in the pool. It's not windy, cold, and rainy in Seville. Tim has started training again. He wanted to go to Seville, but was told he had to stay at home. The excuse for not going to Seville was so that I could be at home and do normal things. Um, 
it now seems that I'm not at home doing normal things. Um, I'm effectively in a cold, wet, windy Seville. Tim's been sent to a rehabilitation centre. He's training hard, knowing he's got a tough fight on his hands to get back in the boat. But it's lonely for Tim, training on his own. It's good to have your dad to talk to, actually, otherwise there'd be no one here. Um, you're my enemy, mate. You can get half day nearly, can you? Yeah. Oh, it was that English half day. Why pass? Yeah, OK, we're still sitting here and talking. It's your business. Yeah. OK, yeah, fine. Now you the half day You don't stuff. just count the hours on the water, Jürgen. It's the talking about it and the, the focus that you have as well. That's got to be you. It's focus right until you stop talking. Yeah, once you said that, right. right. I think <laughs> session's over. <laughs> Suddenly you realise how tired you are. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jürgen just said that he yeah, thought the boat was going quite well. Uh, says it's given him great hairs, great hairs for. for Worrying about uh, what he's going to do with it. And what did you say back? I said that uh, boat boat seemed to be uh, really comfortable. Um, that head spinning quite well. Yeah. It just feels to me sort of business as usual, really. Yeah. Well, I just feel it feels better than that, isn't it? That's the that's the quandary for all of us, isn't it? Yeah. He's just dropped right in and feels as good as it ever has. And if it's this good now, he adapts quite well to Matthew's and Steve's rowing. That looks quite similar to Tim. We know Tim is a very skillful athlete. He is mentally tough, and his, yeah, okay, his hardness in in, in in difficult situation, you know, so to race and so that's something. Okay, we haven't seen so much from from Ed Kut, and he has not a chance so far. Yeah, we have to see uh, the difference between those two. Nobody has a, a free ticket to be in that form. It's only based on performance. Well, Ed himself, if it's overrating, we do yes. an extra stroke next time. If James overrating, he has to do a stroke less next time. This is a tough decision for you, and yeah, Ed's obviously flying. Ed's younger, he's got more to improve. He's going to get a lot better by Sydney. But if it'll be good enough to catch up to him, I don't, I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. I'm just glad that I have to choose. I wouldn't. Yeah. We all want the fastest four, and if it's proved to be faster with whoever, then that's the one it goes with. But it'd be nice to have Tim back. Yeah, you know, I do miss showing him. I do miss not having him around. Tim's back is getting better. The doctors have said he can try rowing again. This is it. It's the first outing of Foster. I'm sneaking up on him. And, uh, first time he's taken to the water since uh, uh, whenever, October. He's got a nice sunny day for it, Jamie bastard. Right. Very rare outing. Have to wait months to catch a foster on the water. <laughs> this could be the lucky day. <laughs> I can't remember what I'm doing. Right. It's really nice to see him go out again. I yeah, think that's the second time he's had to take six months off, nearly. He's a strong bastard. Mentally, you know. Hopefully he'll come back to what he was. And then it'll be, you know. Good to get the full going again. Yeah. You know, I've, you do have different thoughts about, you know. Will, will he come back? When he come back? You know, when he comes back, will he be as good as he was? You know, it's really weird not knowing. He's really attacking it, which is 
you know, I guess the thing we're worried about is he wouldn't attack it hard enough, but he has attacked it easily hard enough. I think it's great. It's going to start it on the water again. So the challenge, I guess, has really started now. After my light introductory period, um, I have to start proving myself now. Which I'm not doing with the iron very well. I think I must have been pretty spoiled by having three sisters. And a very doting mother. No, I'm not too not too worried at all about Tim's return. It was inevitably gonna happen. And uh, I'm really pleased with the few months I've done with the four. And uh, who knows, I might even give it a crack to try and take his place. I think if I get a chance to race in it. I have a lot more, a bit more leverage to keep myself in there. Tim also realises this. He goes to a meeting at the National Rowing Headquarters to try and get back into the fall for that all-important first race in two months' time. Um, right, to ask the question, I mean, if we're now looking ahead, what's the soonest, the earliest time that Tim, you know, could be, could race, could play Okay. As long as he's back to take the trainer, I'd suggest he's got to get up to fitness, and fitness presumably you won't know about until we've seen his BMC test. Mm -hmm. We won't know how much he's lost in this period, and therefore how far we've got to go. It's, it's not easy, David, but no, I know. okay. I understand. Just watching him the last week and the week before, I think you can only really see it. it's a progress. I would see him in the second World Cup, right? Okay. If that is, I don't know if that's. I mean, if you said, to be honest, the first of all, Cup Regatta, it wouldn't be me holding you back. I'd <laughs> try it and see. <laughs> that this way. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, okay. I wouldn't say, it wouldn't, once again, it wouldn't frighten me if you did say, yeah. if you had the confidence or whatever. And so it's from a, a public point of view, I think we could, we could say, look, it's progressing really well. There's a possibility Tim could be back for early Regatta. Doesn't mean he'll be racing in the fall. In terms of racing the World Championships or the Olympics, it's the... It's the four I'm interested four in. Four is yeah. our best boat. Mm. The owner will make sure that we have the best four people in it. Yeah, that's, that's it really. And you've got to get... Being held back yeah. for medical reasons is fair enough. But I uh, feel I'm being held back so they can race the first race of the season and see how it goes, which has made it more worrying. Tim has every right to be worried. The second World Cup race is only two weeks after the first. With only six races all packed into the summer months, there's not much chance for Tim to break into the four, especially if they start winning. In a way, it's a bit of a slap to have to go through it, because uh, if I can prove through one means I am the athlete I was, then my place isn't in doubt, or shouldn't be in doubt. I mean, I was the one that won all the trials. Um, every race I was in last year, I won. Um, all the seat racing going back to sort of January last year, we did the pairs matrix and not only did I win it, but I won every individual part of it, which is pretty unusual. I think Ed's a very good oarsman, but uh, I think I'm better. Ed has now got the leverage he wanted, having been selected for the first World Cup regatta in Belgium. I'm going to be late. He's got a real chance of staying in the four permanently, and he's going for it. And it goes up another intensity level in the four. Uh, since I'm all a little bit bigger and stronger than me, <laughs> I'm not going to be too defeatist, though. Um, anyway, I can't admit to them that I'm feeling tired, so I'll just collapse here for the afternoon, I think. Tim is fighting to get fit. He's passing all the fitness tests thrown at him and will compete in the first World Cup regatta in a single skull. It's a hectic time for all of them as they prepare for the race season. 
The rest of their lives have to fit in around their rowing. That can be washed, I think. Pretty well all this stuff can go in the washing part. Today has been so long. <sighs> My preparation for tomorrow will be hard sex. Is that the preparation for tomorrow? <laughs> 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 First World Cup race is fast approaching, but Ed needs a break. He's driving to Cornwall to his parents' house. It's nice to be home, just for the 24 hours that I am. Slightly less than 24 hours. I'm going to have to go back up this afternoon to do a bit more training this evening. I really feel like I've been so intensely involved with the rowing in the past, which I have been. It's been everything since for the past six months, especially since Christmas. I've really focused on, on the four. Um, and it's seven days a week. So, just to have this chance to step away from it, see that there are other things in the world beside rowing, there's a strong possibility that Hartswinkle will be my only regatta in the fall. And I'd uh, obviously like to do well in it, not be the uh, scapegoat for it going badly. The first World Cup regatta will decide if Ed stays in the boat. Last year, with another substitute in Tim's seat, the four came fourth. Steve does not want history to repeat itself. The crunch day, and seeing how, how we really go in this combination. Since Seville, I don't think it's been uh, as good as, as uh, the first few weeks in Seville. That went really well, set up really well. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think we, we're not quite sure of, uh, of how we're going. And, uh, we're not as confident about winning. And here's the new man, Cardo. First look at him in the World Cup this year. And a big day for him, not only for today, but for the rest of the season. There'll be one person sitting uh, in the grandstand at the end of this race, watching this race, and that'll be Tim Foster looking at the outcome here, wondering uh, how this crew are going to fare after today. But today's race is for them. It's Cracknell, Redgrave, Code and Pinson. They know they've got this race wrapped up, just long and loose, enjoying it. Absolutely brilliant. Great Britain won. Easy win in the first regatta this series. It was good, I enjoyed the race, it's the biggest amount of one by, maybe the competition wasn't that hot, but uh, it's good for Ed. Yeah. Uh, first World Cup win. First World Cup, yeah, it's first World Cup win. It's not my first win, actually. I'm going to put a day off. <laughs> How do I pull? You've got two chances, mate. <laughs> okay. And me, actually. This glass is sick. You're gorgeous. <laughs> You're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be on telly sometime, I hope. Hi, right, Dad, how are you? Yeah. Well, do you want to know? Yeah, we won. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be phoning you. I, mean, <laughs> I wouldn't be phoning you if I'd lost, did I? <laughs> <laughs> no, we won quite comfortably. Unfortunately, Haaswinkle wasn't such a success for Tim in his single skull. He was knocked out in the first heats. I missed out by a second. So that's disappointing. But then, I mean, I've never sculled before in a race like this. But still, when you race, you want to you wanna do well. Yeah, that does look comfortable margin, doesn't it? <laughs> look, they went the wrong side of the final. It would be nice to have been in the fort today, because I wouldn't really have had to extend myself. I don't quite know what happens now. So. But I'm not really looking forward to seeing the rest of the team. Just, just be nice to be sitting down at dinner today. And got three. <laughs> and that would have surprised so many people. And uh, I know I could have got through. But it's really interesting to see what will happen next week. Um, does Tim come back into the four? Um, he's performing at a reasonable level. Um, probably faster in a sculling boat than, uh, than any of the four of us in the four could do at the moment. Um, really, I don't know. I just don't know the answers. And I hope I'm not the one making the decision.
It's the crew's coach, Jürgen, who has the final say. What is the next step? I think the four as it is will race the next World Cup. I think we are the only winner, the four raced well, and uh, there's, there's no point to me to change anything. To make big progress, he is not quite there, from my point of view, he is still on the way up. Uh, so he will have a seat in the eight. I discussed that too with Tim. There's no, no question. Uh, okay, Tim has, has different thoughts and this is fine. Uh, I think there's no question. His aim is to go back in the four. The eight is less likely to get an Olympic gold, as everyone is aware, especially Tim. I don't really see the eight as a, a long-term option. Um, not so much because of the people who are in it or anything like that, a negative thing, it's just, it's not what I'm here for, it's not, uh, it's not what I'm aiming at, it's not what I think my level is really, um, but we'll have to see. Um, one of the uh, things James warned me about was that, um, I mean, the way Jürgen works, it's quite dangerous if you go in a boat and it goes fast, then uh, you could end up just staying in that boat. Really relieved to be in the boat for Vienna. Um, and, you know, I guess now I would be upset not to be in the boat, even if Tim replaced me, because I think it's going well. Uh, and I think I've been in the crew for a long time now. So I'm feeling... Uh, at home in the boat, you could say. They are now locked into a hectic training and race schedule. There are two major races coming up, in Vienna and Lucerne, and if Ed continues to be in a winning crew, it's going to be extremely difficult for Tim to break in. Great Britain will take the second win of the 1999 series. They lead the World Cup in Coxus Falls. See there, Tim Foster, he'll be vying though for his place back in the men's Coxus 4 with Regrave, Pinson and Crack. A good performance from the British. Tim also does well in the eights, but this is a double-edged sword. Well, I like to do it, okay, still to carry on and, okay, it's not selection now. Leaves the four as a four at the, at the moment for the next three meet. Maybe, sort of, for the team, it's good, sort of, me rowing in the eight, but it's not something I would do for the World Championships. I mean, I would have to, if there wasn't rowing in the four, then I would then have to think, well, what, what do I do? It's all coming to a head. Tim has given Jürgen an ultimatum. It now all hinges on Lucerne. A decision will be made immediately afterwards on who is selected for the World Championships. The first time that Red Grave has been led this season. It's level, it's stroke by stroke, and who's looking the better? To my mind, the Norwegians close up. Yeah, we've got you. That's what they must be thinking now. And they're just ahead. It's a matter of feet. They're going to lose this race unless they go now. It's Great Britain just inching ahead. It's just on the line, and it is just Great Britain. I think that race, Gary, was a little too close for comfort for what they would have liked. A certain individual out in the grandstand, a little smile on his face. Selection date on Tuesday this coming Tuesday. I should imagine there'll be uh, a huddling of coaches over the next couple of days, and starting tonight at the airport. But something, something has to now change. Something has to uh, think, well, is Tim going to come in? Tim Foster putting everything in. He knows this race is maybe his ticket to get back in the four. Britain on 44, 43, 44 strokes a minute. On the line, the Russians, a matter of feet from Great Britain. A very, very good result from Great Britain in a very classy field. A four win by a small margin, and the eight produces its best performance of the season. It's going to be a tough decision for Jürgen. Back home, Tim is on tenterhooks. He's had a brief chat with Jürgen to arrange a meeting, but Jürgen has given nothing away. He's obviously uh, pretty pleased about the eight, which either means, yeah, he's pleased with what I've done. He wants me to stay in it, or... Um, it's pleased with what I've done. I think I'm good enough to get back in. 
สวัสดีนายมันสิ I really know you now for quite a while, especially in the last year. You are really growing and shows you are professional uh, in that whole game, becoming from from a medal uh, athlete, really learning to win races, and I think that that's really good. I'm, I'm very pleased. How I see it, and at the moment, Tim. I need you in the aid, Tim. I need you in the aid. That's a very okay. I know that that's very disappointing for you, but I see it as a very positive thing from my point of view. So now I need to make up my mind as to to what I do. Do I put my foot down? Or do I concede and do what he wants me to do? And he's, I mean, he's practically admitted it's, it's doing this for team, for the team. It's not for me. It's not even necessarily for the four. It's for the team. Am I just not cynical enough? Am I too easy going? I'll stand up for myself. If he'd have genuinely believed, I wouldn't row the eight. He wouldn't have asked me to today. Is the, the impression he wanted to give me to give me? What would you do? Okay, how are you, Tim? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I've been thinking and uh, sort of trying to work some things out, mm. but. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Basically, yeah, I'll do the eight and yeah, be positive. Right, and thank you very much. <laughs> it's uh, not yeah. all for you. I mean, I yeah, I want to win. I want to win in an eight as well. So. No, that's the right attitude. So you're coming, please, to the press conference. Yeah, I sort of come down and yeah, put on my press face or whatever. So. Seeing the thing as a whole, the Coxless Four as the Coxless Four race through the season. Is the Coxless Four for the World Championships? And him, he's not been dropped from the Coxless Four, so okay, he didn't make it so far, uh, but he makes big, big progress, and I think this uh, isn't what I've gone through all this for. And the annoying thing is, back operation is is what's supposed to put pay to your plans. But then it's a it's a personal battle. I've gone better than anything I would have anticipated, and yet still. Don't get back in for this year, and uh, that's a difficult one to take. A lovely bit. I wasn't by any means certain that I was going to get in. So many people were saying, "Well done," as if I've got a gold medal in my top pocket already. You know, it's effectively in the bag, which is definitely not. There's another year to go, so it's not over yet. Next week. With five people for four places, Jurgen has to decide who goes to the Olympics. As time runs out, James's love life threatens to rock the boat. You know, if I don't win the Olympics, I'm going to look back for the rest of my life and and, re and regret it.